You Obviously, I could have played guys. this differently, maintained a relationship with HCL, and kept playing on their games. I just didn't give a f anymore. Period. In my most recent video about some cheating allegations from one player to another at HCL, I also posted this to Twitter to help promote it. It simply said, this guy had his aces cracked on at Hustler Casino Live last night, so he accused the show slash Luda of cheating him. Luda offered to be strip searched, but sadly, he was not taken up on the offer. Emergency video incoming. Totally jokingly, I tagged Garrett and said, quote, no comment yet from at G-Man Poker. To my total surprise, Garrett actually replied with the following. Quote, this hand is not suspicious. It has zero common with Jack-4, and I am not responsible for the reputation of HCL. They made their own bed. That being said, I specifically chose to avoid playing in games with Luda despite how poorly he played. Former Live at the Bike owners and bicycle casino executives with first-hand knowledge would be the ones who could shed additional light on the reasons he was banned from Live at the Bike after winning heaps playing like a maniac on stream in a game that he played 20 times bigger than the 5-5 game he played otherwise. Wow, okay, so he does not think cheating happened in this specific hand, but he is basically saying Luda is a cheater, right? Garrett is saying Luda was previously banned from Live at the Bike many years ago for unknown reasons, but it is pointing towards cheating when all of this is based around cheating, right? Ryan Feldman, the owner of HCL and friend of Luda, quickly chimes in and says, Quote, claims he specifically avoided games with him, claims he knows how poorly he played, but here's a text where he claims it was his first time ever watching him play in February of 2022 and says he played well. Well, which is it? Feldman provides a screenshot of a text message between him and Garrett. A part of it specifically contradicts what Garrett says with, quote, first time ever seeing Luda play and he thought he played well. Garrett calls this text, quote, meaningless, which I get as maybe it could be interpreted a couple different ways. We know Garrett played Live at the Bike years ago when Luda played, right? So it probably wasn't his first time seeing him play in February of 2022. Maybe it was his first time seeing him play on HCL, so he just happened to play well at that time? Opinions on how someone plays and their skill level can certainly change over time. The bigger takeaway from the text really was Garrett's ranking system for players. Here it is, clear as day. We see MM is a 3.5, Dylan is a 2, Julie is a 2.5, and Bill is an 8. So it seems the higher score maybe represents the less skilled a player is. Johnny Vibes hilariously points out MM or double M catching strays. If you remember, double M was a high stakes reg for a long time. So yeah, this player ranking system in text was just totally necessary information left in the screenshot. Oops! I mean, I get it, these guys are totally feuding and trading jabs once again. Speaking of jabs, we actually hear from the king of drama himself, Doug Polk, as he chimes in and describes how he does have a problem with people posting screenshots of private conversations. To his credit, he does stick to his word, as last year, I think, you know, he had a real problem with this with Matt Berkey. Anyways, everyone's favorite high stakes pro, Nick Airball, uses this as an opportunity to point out Garrett's ranking system and says, quote, judge for yourself. When I saw this, I thought it was just lame and didn't really mean much. I mean, this stuff has been talked about before. Airball is using this as some sort of gotcha moment. Like, look, see? I told you. Look how bad Garrett is. Now, sure, it is not the best look for Garrett to be judging other players who are even his friends who might take offense to this kind of thing. But in reality, like these comments on Airball's post point out, what of it? Quote, this is his business. He's pro poker player. These games were his main source of income. He leveraged his likeliness to make the most profitable games for him. It's sharp and what anyone would do in this spot Problem is most people are Rex and see this as predatory instead of his job. Quote, you just showed how smart G-Man is with his money and his choice of games. This is just not the text to bring to shame on G-Man. He adds Ryan in the show and says, have to try again, I think. Quote, what do you want people to judge? Is it unclear? He wants to play in games that he feels confident he will crush. I mean, yeah, at the end of the day, this is what poker is about, you know, winning in, in good games. And finally, the icing on the cake, quote, airball, 12.5. AKA airball he would love to play with. I myself just commented these two words, which resulted in a legendary ratio. For the older crowd, that is when a comment gets more likes than the original post itself. A very rare achievement, I must say, that I am quite proud of. But sadly, it resulted in me getting blocked by airball. Too bad.
Now back to the topic on hand, Garrett vs. Ryan. Ryan responds with, quote, Come on, man, enough with the blatant lies. You were never once invited to a game he played in, not even once. You didn't specifically choose not to play with him. What's the point of this? If you were admitting this hand is completely a nothing, then why spread shit for no reason? To which Garrett responds with an even longer tweet than last time. You know, I think he should take up writing. I'm gonna read fast. Oh, hi Ryan, appreciate your text that you were rooting for me in my comeback games, then regurgitating these same year old talking points that still nobody cares about in regards to lineups. Also, thanks for also claiming people think I stole Robbie's money after you yourself hilariously claimed there was a 40% chance she cheated. I was wondering when you would stop having guys like Errol do your dirty work and your weak attempts at discrediting me, fearful your many secrets would get out. You and your echo chamber HCL fan Family have done all you can to tarnish my reputation to protect your business interests and it's not gonna work. The only thing you ultimately accomplished by having airball spew lies and exaggerations was to toss Berkey a milli at your puppet's expense. By the way, Nick Airball still waiting for you to follow through on the heads up match you challenged me to. Or did the offer expire as you said? Yes, it did expire. Anyway, where was I? Ryan, there were countless times I confirmed with you directly that Luda would not be playing on HCL before I'd agree to play that day, period. Why? By then, I was extremely concerned the many things people told me about him were true. While we are at it, want to talk about how you hid from everyone, including your co-owners at Live at the Bike, that Luda was your roommate? Want to talk about why you broke down in tears, pleading on several occasions for the former COO of the bike to remove the ban on Luda? Why was that decision so devastating for you? Want to talk about why the other owners of Live at the Bike and Casino Management banned Luda in the first place? Want to talk about how the rest of the players in that anti-game felt about him playing after several hands they claimed were suspicious? Want to talk about the wildly different way others told me he played off stream versus on it. We are only scratching the surface here, man. Happy to chat about home games and online app games next if you'd like. Also, cue the echo chamber that all profits from being on Team Ryan, NV, HCL, etc. I just don't give a shit anymore. So yeah, in summary, I think Garrett is really just trying to point out that, uh, you know, Luda was really suspect the entire time in terms of him possibly having something to do with cheating. And, you know, when he's suspect, then it makes others around him, like Ryan and maybe HCL in general, suspect. But, you know, it seems like Garrett can't necessarily go into all the details or, or say things because, you know, he can't necessarily prove them or it's maybe he versus she said. After this bomb, Feldman and Garrett go back and forth, but I won't read through it again and bore you all with the details. So here it is. If you want to read it, read it. Joey Ingram ends up getting called upon like Batman himself to arbitrate a podcast with the two, which he essentially ends up doing. He joins a Twitter space and gets everyone in the room together. First him, then Vertucci joins, then Felbin, and finally Garrett. Did I ask you countless times, every time uh, there was a game where Luda was talking about playing, and also to be clear, Luda played in many, many big games as well, and you'll notice I never once played in a single one of those. Ryan knew exactly how I felt about it, and I asked him countless times, is Luda playing on this day? And every time he would just confirm no. And before Ryan answers, I just like want to point out that I am painfully aware that Ryan and Ludacris have always been, at minimum, extremely close friends. So like where he tries to like tastelessly like post that screenshot or whatever. Like, what did he think, like, I was going to say about Luda? Like, I'm never going to say anything negative about Luda to Ryan, knowing how close they are. So anyway, the question, Ryan, is, did I ask you many times, is Luda playing before I would play in a game? Uh, I would strongly deny that. I even went back and tried to find old text to see. Ryan, Ryan, stop twisting the words. I asked many times in our yeah, verbal answer, conversations. Let me, let me... Okay, I do not remember that ever happening. Um, I'm being honest with you. I'm not saying it didn't. I don't remember that ever happening. Did you hide from anyone? HCL ownership. Uh, no, sorry, HCL ownership. Sorry. Uh, live at the bike minority ownership. And I'm not blowing up any one specific spot here in any way. I'm just naming a few of the minority owners of Live at the Bike at that time. That would be Evelyn. That would be JJ. That would be Dan Zach. Did you not reveal to any of those people at any time that Luda was your roommate? Um, okay. 
I would say that I never like specifically intentionally for any malicious reason lied or hid that fact from anyone. I didn't go and announce it once we started being roommates. I didn't go and post it like, hey, guys, like just letting you know, because I didn't think it was that big of a deal. But I never maliciously hid it from anyone. It would be ridiculous for the other owners of HCL. No, I'm sorry. I keep doing that. <laughs> uh, the other owners of Live at the Bike to not know Ryan and Ludacris are roommates. Why, like, I'll turn it back on you. Why didn't you go and like tell people or publicly that there was a player playing in Friday games sometimes with you that was living with you for a while? Living with me? No one has ever lived with me in a Friday game. Not even close. A player's never a play, No poker players ever stayed at your house for weeks? No, absolutely not. All right, well, that's not what I'm talking yeah. uh, I'm a 37-year-old man like who's lived alone and then with my wife exclusively since I moved to L.A. 13 years ago. So. All right, well. Let, I mean, we're, we're uh, really I'm, like grasping for straws here, bro. I'm not grasping of for course, straws. Of course, dude, that was your whole that, interview like, with Vertucci, man. Like, I'm really going to try not to get into this too much. Did you break down in tears when you pled to the former CEO – COO of the bike uh, when trying when trying to remove the ban that had been placed on Luda. You and the other owners of Live at the Bike couldn't decide what to do. As if, what, it was some sort of split. Is that right? Is that what you're insinuating? Yes. Okay, who was on your side? Yeah. Name another owner who was on your side who thought it was best that Luda continue to play in the games. Uh, Brian and Evelyn both did at first. They were both on my okay, side. Again, you see, even like the at first, you know, and, and these things are... Well, we, we had a, we, you're not there. We had a conversation. We had probably four long conference calls about yeah. this. Like, what, what I was they, privy to was, is several people that I'm close with who are former owners giving me word for word how those conversations played out. Like if the other four owners said, oh, we don't care, Ryan, like this is what it's going to be then they would have overpowered me and it would have happened. But that's not what happened. That's exactly what happened, right? Because Luda did get banned from the show no. despite your best efforts. No. Did Luda, we, get, ba did not did Luda get banned from the no, show? No. We did not ban him as a live of the bike. Live of the bike did not ban him. All right, him. then we, need to, we just need to change the word. It's pretty funny that we're ironically I, going back to the word I'm, ban I, here. I, did I, Luda stop was, playing on the show? Yes, because we left it up to the casino. They said yes, and they let him play for the longest time. And there was nothing that happened in that time. And then for whatever reason later, Michelle one time saw me and Chris both playing at the same table before the show off camera. And she walked by and she called me and said, hey, what, what did we decide like two months ago or whatever? Like I thought we said like well, he wasn't going to play anymore or whatever. And I was like, no, you, you and um, Mark, God rest his soul, said no. Like, And Mark was the one leading the case. Mark was the one who was – and Mark was on – mostly on – uh, Chris's side about letting him play. Yeah. And Mark said, no, let, let's just let him play, but just try to scale it back, like have him play once or twice a well, week instead of like two or three That's times awfully times. convenient. The guy who's passed away was on his side. That's beautiful. Yeah. It's just super cute. So okay Vertucci comes in here and he goes, agenda, you know what's, but it's not okay. you know what's so funny about that screenshot? Yet. Like Ryan posted a screenshot and on accident it shows the rating scale. Like, I mean, who are we fooling here? You got to be dumb as fucking rocks to not understand, like, their elementary strategy to, like, try to make me look bad on the internet, you know? Yeah, I'm dumb as rocks, and you're the guy who accidentally banned yourself from playing on shows, and, like, you're... Yeah, dude, because you and I are... Problems. You and I couldn't be more the opposite, dude. I don't give a fuck about money. I don't give a fuck. Then why did you fucking take 135000 from because, the if you don't care about money, you fucking Because liar? it's obviously the fucking right thing to do because I was fucking oh, cheated so in the hand, the right dude. Thing to do, it's okay to take money from people. Get the fuck out of here, dude. We it. all knew exactly okay. what happened with Postal. And when she offered me the money, which you damn well know happened, that was the moment that like, I realized this is the only opportunity like justice will ever fucking be served here you know that i know that the two things have nothing in common and this dumb accusation like oh garrett's stupid so garrett's so, stupid so he cost himself money, money. money get the fuck you out of here money, obviously i could have played this differently maintained a relationship with hcl and kept playing on their games i just didn't give a fuck anymore period
So anyway, this whole thing is getting like super off the rails. So uh, Eden, right. Eden I'm gonna I'm gonna hop off. You don't care about money when you took 135,000. Wow, dude, that what, right. a, what a brilliant comeback, dude. Exactly. Yeah, that's why. Like I. Put all right, Garrett, thank you. Thank you so much. Sorry to cut you off. Just a quick thing. We're going to leave it at that. It, uh, it's up to Garrett if you want. Yeah, there he goes. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Garrett. And boom. That was fun, right? I personally found it super odd the host here actually admitted to cutting Garrett off. It was basically the peak level of conversation. Garrett was super angry and really letting it all out. Max entertainment for us. Are you not entertained? After all this went down, Garrett had this to say. Quote, I woke up the last couple days feeling really low, feeling a lack of peace with the way things played out on Wednesday. In fact, feeling unhappy with my words online on several occasions over the past year plus. I've received a bunch of heartfelt messages over the past couple days, many offering supportive words along the lines of keep fighting the good fight. But the notes that affected me most were from friends I respect who told me the opposite. You gotta stop rolling in the mud with these people. This is not who you are and there is no winning here. They are exactly right. The truth is, as much as I've tried to convince myself and others, I'm still angry. I'm angry at the people who allegedly cheated me. I'm angry at the other group who tried to destroy my reputation the moment I suggested I was cheated to protect their business. I'm angry at people, most of whom I've never met, that thought they knew everything there was to know about me based on the way I handled an impossible situation. I'm angry these people think I'm a bad guy, an attack that hurts above all others for me. And most of all, I'm angry with myself for not being stronger, for letting all the above affect my quality of life such a large extent for such a long time. It's it's time to let go of the anger. I've never claimed to be a hero in all of this, far from it, but I can and will be better moving forward. I'll catch you all soon for more poker and less drama. Too bad, we really love the drama. So yeah, it seems like a lot of the reason for Garrett to reopen all of this had to do with how angry he still is. Ryan Feldman was on Nick Bertucci's podcast just last week or so, and Garrett clearly did not agree with many things he had to say there. Garrett found a convenient spot after I tagged him, you all are welcome, and the rest is history. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of this situation. I can see both sides as always. This is a topic that gets lots of different opinions just because of how crazy the whole Cheating scandal was with HCL. There was lots of arguments for both sides. You know, this situation is one that is talked about for years at this point, and it seems like it might continue for even longer. I know I made some bangers out of all of this. If you haven't seen them, check them out. And thanks for watching. Peace.